All right, guys, just going to do a quick little um, review on the Hobby King DIY FPV goggles, um, also known as wearing a box on your face and looking really goofy at the field. Um, but hey, it works. How do I know it works? Because for the last year, I've been using these. Um, this is my garage built model. It's a three and a half inch low resolution monitor, foam board box. Um, kind of folded and built in uh, experimental airline style attached to a set of old motocross goggles that I had uh, there's a Fresnel lens inside they work great I love them been using them for a year and considering the cost to build these for me was about 20 bucks um, it's a heck of a deal I've tried Fat Shark Predators V2s I've tried uh, the Attitudes I prefer these um, the OSD is just cleaner, uh, the screen is bigger, um, it just works a lot better for me. But anyway, um, I saw these come out. I was lucky, got in on the first batch. Um, they shipped really quick. Uh, my overall impression is that uh, the package is really clean and nice. Um, it's a small form factor, um, maybe not quite as goofy looking as the garage built ones because... We don't have all the duct tape and, you know, they just look more like a production model. So you might not get uh, razzed quite as much from your buddies at the field. You still will, though, because you're wearing a box on your face. But anyway, um, I like the form factor. It's small. Um, I like the monitor that it comes with. I'll, I'll go into uh, detail a little bit more on that in a second here. Um, I haven't actually glued this one together because I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to set it up. But... Um, I, my plan for this one was actually to use a GoPro head strap, modify this so that you would get the top strap over your head as well to help support that weight. Um, but actually, it doesn't weigh that much at all. Um, let's get the scale here and see how much this thing actually weighs. Let's see here. And this is, of course, with the heavy plugs. Um, a lot of guys are going to use them with these plugs. Some guys that are concerned about weight or like to tinker with stuff, they're going to change these out to just like a standard servo plug or something that's a lighter weight modular plug. That's what I did on my home built ones and it works really well. These plugs can get kind of heavy, especially when it's hanging off the back of the monitor, you know, leveraging down on your face like this. So um, let's see how much these guys weigh with the connector and the screen in there. These are all set to go. And we're looking at 173 grams. So that's not too bad. Uh, let's compare that to my DIY goggles that I've been using for the last year. Let's see, ski goggles and all. These come in at 282 grams. So about 100 grams lighter, a little better than 100 grams lighter for the Hobby King model. Um, so that's good. Lightweight is always good, especially when you have something hanging off the front of your face. Um, you don't get fatigued as much with a lighter weight. Um, let's go into talking about the monitor. And we'll get to that here. All right. Um, goggles are taken apart. Here's the monitor that comes with it. Um, thing's super lightweight. It's really thin. Um, it does come with your standard plugs. Now, one thing that I had asked about on the, uh, the Hobby King on the comments for the product page for this is they said that the, that you have an audio input. Why you would have an audio input to a monitor that doesn't have any speakers, I don't know. And I suspected that this, just like every other cheap, um, backup monitor, is just a second video input which actually after I plugged it in it is it's a number two video um, I believe the way they work is number one has priority so if you've got a video signal coming in on the number one that's going to show up and then if you introduce a signal on video two that one will show up and I it's for backup monitors and I think so you can watch the DVDs on a tiny screen or Something weird like that. But anyway, this is not an audio input like Hobby King says. Um, other than that, though, the screen is fantastic. 
Um, they call it a low resolution screen, but I'm telling you, um, I also have, I have one of these. Um, this is a screen that is a, supposed to be, let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is 800 by 480 in a five inch screen. Um, I had this one for a while, I was gonna build it into a second set of goggles. Um, what we can do here is I'll compare the picture, and I'm telling you, this low-res screen from Hobby King is every bit as good as this one that claims to be 800 by 480. Okay, um, got the 5-inch screen on top and the Hobby King 4.3-inch screen on the bottom. Um, they probably look really crappy in the camera. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to come across on YouTube, probably really bad, but um, just sitting here looking at them with the naked eye um, the Hobby King screen has every bit as good a picture as this uh, supposed higher resolution screen if if not a little bit better um, because the the pixels aren't so spread out um, so I'm really impressed with this screen the other thing is is it's uh, you don't get the blue screen disconnect the video signal and you get static so I got a blue screen on the top, which eventually the monitor just turns off after it doesn't have a video signal on that top one. The Hobby King monitor stays on with static. So um, that's a good thing, obviously. So they are right when they say it's not a blue screen monitor. It just doesn't have an audio input, which is not a big deal. Um, the picture actually is being taken from my, uh, it's on my QAV250 sitting out in the yard and that is a PZO 420 so I mean that's your standard FPV camera um, both of these pictures are actually pretty nice especially when you get them closed up in a box put a Fresnel lens in front of it um, I'm really really impressed with this screen especially because of the non blue screen qualities um, it's got a bunch of adjustments for brightness and color and you can also change over to um, let's see here and change mode go to you know the narrower mode four to six or whatever it is four by eight or change it over to 16 by nine depend on what camera you're shooting with and how you like to fly um, but the screen's really really nice I actually um, contemplated keeping the screen and put it in my own goggle housing and, and I'll I'll get to that why I would do that here in a minute All right, we're back to the uh, screen, back in the housing, all closed up. Um, it's not glued yet, but I haven't. Uh... Here's uh, a couple of issues that I have with this thing. Um, first off, what they use, what Hobby King uses is, um, let's see if I can grab these here. They use these little, uh, which is probably like a one in a, the, the actual focusing portion of these Fresnel lenses is let's see if we can grab a stick here and find out exactly what this is um, the focusing area is only one and three quarters by three inches so that's what you're looking at when you look down your goggles now that probably wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that when you put this guy in there and I have the other one in here you have the frame that holds that Fresnel lens in place um, the frame comes in off the side of the goggles probably three quarters of an inch so it really narrows down your field of view and what I find is when I put these up to my face um, when I have both eyes open the edges are blurry and the reason that is is because and you can see this when you close one eye at a time you're looking at the frame on the side this is actually where the frame comes into is narrower than my eyes are so that lens needs to be bigger now you DIY guys you can fix that easily um, in my home built goggles I have I bought a um, you know a full page or like a 5 by 7 Fresnel lens you cut out the size that you need which I would suggest this whole entire opening um, so you don't get any of this frame blocking your view which is a problem with these Hobby King goggles um, just make sure that you cut out from the center otherwise if you cut out from one corner of the Fresnel lens it's going to skew um, your view of the screen 
So the frame is too big and or the lens is too small for in here. Here's the other problem. The frame, and I don't know if you can see this, the frame doesn't touch the inside of the box. So what you get is you can probably see that glare coming in on the top of the box. This frame needs to be sealed up tight against the top of the box so you don't get this glare from the screen coming past the frame that holds the lens. Um, they probably did that for clearance so you can obviously adjust that Fresnel lens which is a great feature but the tolerances need to be a little bit tighter. Maybe put uh, you know a little some sort of a sweeper or some soft gasket material around the edge to block out that light because what you get in here is when you put these things up to your face get that glare that shines in from the exposed areas around the frame that holds the lens so that needs to be addressed um, and here is my final issue with these I can't wear these things from front to back the thing whoops, from front to back the thing is really short um, which is good if you're worried about looking like a geek but let's see here let's give you a measurement here from front to back you're looking at five and a half inches which if you look where the screen actually is um, from the screen to the edge of the goggles is only four and three quarters inches that's too close to my face um, when I put my face in here I can't focus I need to pull this box like probably two inches away from my face to actually get to focus and I've tried all three lenses I've tried moving the the lens back and forth but the screen is just it's just a bit too close to my eyes to actually get a good focus now that might be different with with different users um, but I don't wear glasses I don't wear contacts I have 2020 uh, 20 vision at least last time I checked um, and the screen is just too close there, there's a there's a point to where it gets too close and you just can't focus that's on my home built version I actually did some experimenting with how close I could get this screen to my face and still be able to get a good focus with different types of Fresnel lenses. Um, what I ended up with on this one is the whole box to the front of the goggles is about six inches. Um, where the actual screen is, which is in a little bit, you're probably talking about five and a half inches. So here you have four and three quarter inches and here you have five and a half inches if this box on the hobby king goggles was about an inch to an inch and a half longer i think it would be perfect um, but as it sets right now i can't use these things i, I tried different fresnel lenses um, it's just that screen is just too close to my face um, thought about trying to block this off a little bit to space it out for my face a little bit that's not going to work either um, so the whole package, the idea is a really good idea. Um, like I said, I've been using those other ones for a year. This one though, um, for me, it wasn't executed exactly like it should have been. Um, so those are my three issues with these goggles. And in conclusion, I'm going to be staying with my home built goggles. And you're likely to see these ones up on the... Uh, up on the classifieds here in a little bit but um, the box is too short the lens is too small and there's a gap around the lens frame that lets light uh, get back to your eyes which is really distracting um, other than that this little monitor that's in here is great I, I contemplated keeping this monitor and building them into my own home built goggles um, and I still might do that but uh, overall it's a it's a nice little package but it does have some some shortfalls which I think could have been easily fixed um, but I'll let you guys decide that those are my thoughts um, it's a great little setup though for guys just getting into FPV or someone that actually wears glasses or something that can't wear uh, you know like a traditional fat shark type goggle so uh, those are my thoughts um, if you guys have any comments or questions um, just let me know below or hit me up on RC groups my screen name is the same and um, have fun.